I'm going to test my new highly sensitive setup and catch some fish. When it is really cold and line is stiff, the fish is small and barely active, the sensitivity of your fishing rig suffers, making it difficult to detect the light bites. I made this sensitive setup specifically for situations like this. There are four components that contribute to the sensitivity of this setup. The first component is this tiny fishing palm rod. In combination with the other components, it is extremely sensitive for the light bite. The first spot I tried produced only catfish. Soon it was clear that it's unlikely that this hole will offer anything else. And I had to move to find other species. I wanted to find some panfish to test the sensitivity of my rig. This is another thing I like about palm rods, their portability. I can carry them in my tackle box. I can fit several of them equipped with lighter and heavier palm test lines and different jigs and switch between them to see what works best for each particular spot. This next spot was what I needed. It held mostly sunfish and there were plenty of them. I stayed the rest of the fishing session at this hole and nearby. The next component of the setup is this tungsten jig. Tungsten is a metal that is significantly denser than lead. This means that a tungsten jig is going to weigh more than a lead jig of the same size. To make the lure even more attractive, it's necessary to garnish the jig with a larvae of your choice. I usually put several of them on the hook, but I thought it's enough of that in the video. For the high sensitivity, the fishing line should be absolutely straight between the rod tip and the jig without any coils or slack. A heavier tungsten jig can help keep the line tight and feel strikes better. The thickness of the line is also important. The thicker the line, the stiffer it will get in the cold and will coil easier, which will greatly reduce sensitivity. I use a thin monofilament line that is designed not to get too stiff in low temperatures. And that is the third component. I wanted to try braided line as well, but I was afraid that because braided line absorbs moisture, it may just freeze up, but I will definitely try. The rod is light, almost weightless. It fits in the hand and feels like a part of it. It is easy to jig all day and gives better control over the lure's presentation. The rod is not flexible and too small. It doesn't absorb the shock of the fight at all. This model doesn't allow to set the drag, although there is a mechanism to release the line if the fish starts running. The rod is designed neither to fight fish nor reel it in. It is done by retrieving the line by hands. When the fish pulls or shakes its head, all the stress falls on the line, so it's important to maintain tension with your hands. The fourth component of this rig is my homemade strike indicator, which I've been using successfully for several years now. If you haven't seen it, there is a video on my channel on how to make it. Colder temperatures slow down fish metabolism and they are significantly less aggressive. They have more subtle bites that are harder to detect. Even with a sensitive setup like this, the bites seem very weak. They would be virtually undetectable without a sensitive strike indicator. Recording and fishing take extra effort. And after a few lost fish and various technical difficulties, I've decided to focus on fishing. The bite was on and I caught plenty of sunfish, a few decent sized crappie and white bass. 
This was an unexpectedly good session that resulted in this video. Hope you liked it.